but they're not wired that way. There's a couple of guys that are besides me, but they aren't. Well, I've been around a long time. I know all the players. Well, Y2K had a purpose. The lights didn't go out and the systems didn't break down, but I believe it had a purpose. And, uh, you know, I, I believe, you know, we became wired globally. I mean, face it. I mean, everybody upgraded their system. Look at the money that poured into the technology industry at that time. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I talked to business people who basically went broke thinking they had to repair everything. But you did have a lot of these government local officials that came out and was pitched in the deal also. But, uh, so, I mean, we were wired globally, and I think it did have a purpose, and they used it. And, you know, I think a lot of those guys out there were part of it, and they used it for that reason. You know, I want to be fair to Gary and John. Uh, they were in uh, the cell phone, I'll call it situation, at the beginning. And for the people they got involved who were their subscribers, Gary had about 20,000 subscribers. They and their subscribers who got involved made a lot of money. And so they did have a giant success, but then they had a giant failure. And then we've got Gary trying to call the market. Give me a break. I know John writes about it, too, but John rehashes. I read all his stuff. And uh, John writes books. And Gary writes books. And I don't have time to write books because I'm trying to help people. So there you go. I don't want to die rich. I want to die broke. All right. That looks like those are all my questions. I think I got them all. How about that? Well... We've got ten minutes. Come on, you guys. Send some more questions in. So what else? What Whatever happened? happened to Kathy? Is she still sending them in? Kathy, I haven't, I haven't received anything from her in a while. Oh, well, get out the whip. <laughs> well, Ivan's always good for a question or two. Come I on, did, Ivan. I did two questions of Ivan's today. Oh my goodness! Yes, I did. What else? What else well. went on in the markets today, Bob? Well, uh, you know, yesterday. The Treasury Department, Geithner, uh, really didn't say anything except we may need $2 trillion. There's, there's, there's no, there was no, there was not any commentary as exactly where the money's going. We have all of these rumors and third and second-hand information, but we really don't know exactly. And we still don't know what where the, the first $350 billion went. It never came up. They were asked. They won't tell. Unbelievable. But the stock market's in serious trouble. It's going lower. And uh, thank goodness I got a lot of people out who have run into me in the last couple of years, a year and a half, I guess. Who get out anywhere between fourteen thousand and now, but most of them between twelve and fourteen thousand. And of course, their brokers screamed and yelled at them, and their advisors and all this stuff. And you know, what can this guy, can, meaning me, conceivably know? And uh, now they're asking uh, uh, their portfolios. Uh, these advisors and brokers uh, saying, my goodness, they're up, you know, 30 or 40 percent and uh, some more than that. And some are even. But all the stuff they sold out is down considerably. Now, how do you how do you do that, they're asking these people. I told them all when they asked me, just tell them it's a secret. <laughs> Is that a good answer? Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah, I was just I just noticed here that uh, I guess they came out and uh, the agreement announced uh, for the, uh, the key members of the Senate uh, announced an agreement or something on the stimulus. And it's right. just amazing what's in that stimulus bill. And you know what? Oh. 
This is this reminds me of the Patriot Act. There's so much stuff going in there that's just <laughs> that. I mean, the health, the health care. I mean, that is incredible what's being pushed through there for health care. Well, health care is being socialized. Yes, it is. And you know what? And I, I got a piece in the, in I guess it's a today's issue about how people uh, are going to have to uh, if they're old. Uh, tell tell the doctors you can euphemize me. Yeah. Unbelievable. The government's going to dictate whether you get care or not. I mean, it's just like, it's just unbelievable. You get out of the country is what you do. Old people who are retired like me, who got an income of, say, 2500 3000 a month, two, uh, even 2000 a month, you know, head for warmer climates to the south. Um, you know, Guadalajara, San Jose, Panama City. You know, do it. And I hear the same old refrain. Well, I can't see my son and daughter and the grandchildren. <clears throat> Have them take a plane and come and see you. And I told somebody today, I says, it reminds me of, the, you know, back in the gladiator days, you know, where, you know, the head honcho, you know, thumbs up or thumbs down, whether you lived or whether you died. You know? That's right. Incidentally, this Art Nadell that was picked up in Florida, uh, for, he's a money manager, and, um, uh, he owns that airport in Venice, Florida, where these, supposed 9-11 hijackers were trained to fly. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Huh. Uh, we have a subscriber that lives right next door to that airport. I get information on it all the time. So I got a quick question. Was the upsurge of the credit and card debt instrument in destroying capital formation? Say that again. Was the upsurge of the credit card debt instrumental in destroying capital formation? Gee, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think that one out, and I'd have to do some research on it. Um, I know that the banks, I mean, one of these guys from... Um, I think it was Morgan Stanley Mac said this morning, we should have never been leveraged 30 to 1. He said, I don't know what we were thinking about. Uh, they were leveraged 60 to 1, some of them. These are banks. And what's normal? 8 to 1 under the fractional banking system. And even that's bad. I mean, in every civilization where they've had this fractional banking, which goes all the way back to... The money changers and people who would hold your gold for you, and then they'd use the gold as collateral to lend to other people. But they didn't tell you that. And, you know, and then they get overextended, and then there's a bust, and they lose everybody's money, including their own and probably their heads. That's the way it used to work. In fact, the way that's the way it should work. So I can't answer the question I don't know. But I do know there's a lot of debt out there. It's being reduced and savings is going up and all of that's good. How can oil go down while gold goes up? Oh, that's easy. The oil market is rigged on its own. The U.S. government's behind it and they put it where they want it. Pretty simple. Until we stop the working group on financial markets, disband the Fed, do away with the exchange stabilization fund, which is a subsidiary of the Treasury Department, we don't stand a chance. we got to get government out of the markets. And we have to have an independently run civil authority like the SEC and the CFTC that government's got nothing to do with other than they report to Congress. Sort of like a... Well, one of the policing agencies say the Federal Trade Commission, something like that, where they, they, they look around to make sure that people aren't being cheated by other people. The system we got now doesn't work. 
You know, the first head of the SEC was Joe Kennedy. At the end of the program, Bob, 800-541-88. We'll be back Friday. Good night. Good night, Bob. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>